Okay, my good friends, this is Mr. Davis. We're starting week two of uh, another, I guess, four weeks or so of uh, online education here. So I know you're pretty fired up about that. So um, whenever you get to this uh, lecture tomorrow, you get to it, I guess, so you don't have to get out of bed uh, right away, maybe at uh, 6.30 in the morning. So there are some bright spots of being kind of quarantined in your house. But uh, as we know, it's a big inconvenience. Hopefully, uh, things are getting a little bit easier for us as we go into uh, week two. Uh, please let me know if you have any uh, issues, any problems you're having, um, uh, and, and I'll try to address them. But one thing that I, we really need to do, and, and you'll notice here, is uh, just maybe uh, just making sure we spend the appropriate amount of time on our, our classwork and stuff. So. I do have to kind of give you things where, you know, I know that not just one person is doing it and passing it along because that's really easy to do in this type of situation. Um, so we do try to make it authentic as possible. So today what we're going to try to do is uh, look at a few videos together and then I'm going to have you answer questions. And your first sheet is going to look like this. It's all it's going to look like is please write down five facts from CNN student news. And then I'm getting get rid of all this other stuff on this document that I have here. And then your document is just basically going to say uh, right underneath that, please answer your questions. Okay. Okay. So, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say a period. Tell me what the population of Wuhan is. And then if you're in A period, you would say Wuhan's population is whatever, whatever it happens to be, whatever you find out it is. And then if you're in B period, if you're in D period, you don't answer that question. Then our next question, I might say D period, uh, what date was it first discovered in Wuhan? And then, you know, so on and so forth. I think it'll be pretty explanatory. But it's just a way so that one person doesn't watch the video, do the questions, and get it to everybody. I do have to kind of safeguard the integrity of the class here. So that is what it's going to look like on your end. You're going to get a one really small, simple doc, and you're going to edit it and then submit it back with me. All right, so we will get started here. All right, so we're going to look at the epicenter. We are um, still in Europe. We're still on our Europe unit. But because this is uh, a global pandemic now, uh it, it affects it's affecting europe in in a way unimaginable crazy insane and particularly the country of italy has been ravaged by this uh by this virus so let's look at just china on the map so here is gigantic china most people live in the um what we consider the eastern half of china from basically you just cut it down the middle from like the g of mongolia on and that's where everybody lives. This is the Gobi Desert out here. Uh, this one city, Rumki, um, looks like maybe a sizable uh, population, kind of way out in the middle of nowhere, but most of everybody lives here. So um, our first question is for a period. Can you tell us what the population of Wuhan, China is? So just look that up. You can pause it. You can look it up. Okay, so let's go and get out of this and go back to the fact book. I always like to look at um, the um, the flag and the descriptions, and this flag is all about communism. It is all united under the one communist party. The f these are the four classes. They have four rigid social classes in China. They are the working class, the peasantry, the urban petty bourgeoisie says so there's like your city dwellers and your national bourgeoisie capitalists, which all fall under the big communist party. So it is a communist state. OK, um, if you pause your video here, you can read about China's history. This is a very, very abbreviated history. Um, so I like to look at this here. It says after World War II, the Chinese Communist Party under Mao Zedong established an autocratic socialist system that while ensuring China's sovereignty imposed strict controls over everyday life and the cost of law and cost the lives of tens of millions of people. Okay, so if you're in B period, please write down 
who was leading China's Communist Party after World War II. So what was that guy's name? After 1978, Mao successor Zhang Zhipeng, other leaders focused on market-oriented development, economic development, and by 2000, I, out, output had quadrupled. For much of its population, living standards have improved dramatically, but political controls remain tight. Since the early 1990s, China has increased its global outreach and participation in international organizations. Um, but the tight control, uh, what could be more evident than that than the protests in Hong Kong that we started the school year off? Yeah. Okay, so um, if you're in D period now, please write down per size what does China rank in the world per size? And this is a little bit misleading because we would take out Antarctica here. So China is the blank largest country in the world landmass wise. That is D periods question there. Okay, so we go back here, uh, just a little bit of their history, their people and society. It's always interesting to look at. They're the first country in the world. They're almost at 1.4 billion people. Um, this is interesting here. They're, they're a homogeneous country. So what homogeneous means, so everybody now write down this definition, homogeneous ethnic group means everyone is the same ethnic group in China. So that's the definition. That's Mr. Davis' layman's term of homo, homogeneous ethnic group. Uh, that's not entirely 100% correct, but they all, 92% of the country derives their um, ethnicity back from the Han Dynasty, Han Chinese. Um, so it's not a country where people, uh, they're taking in a lot of immigrants, People aren't really moving there from Japan or the United States to live. It is a homogeneous uh, country. Their uh, language is Mandarin Chinese is their major language. Um, so Mandarin. Um, so many people will say that uh, Mandarin is the most spoken language in the whole entire world. Uh, also, if every can, everybody can write down this about China, that 52.2% of their country is unaffiliated. That means they don't practice a religion. So you can write down that, actually scrap that, just hit the pause button there. I, went, I found this would be a mirror. That they're officially, everyone write this down, it's officially an atheist country. And when I say write this down, I mean type this into the document that you're going to be sharing with me. Okay, so it's an, an atheist nation. Let's just look at the life expectancy here uh, in China. I don't think that like a country this big, a sickness like this is going to dramatically affect the life expectancy. And particularly, it seems like the older population is uh, is the ones being more affected by this. Um they have a life expectancy. So write this down, everyone. Type it in. 76 years of age is their life expectancy. So pretty pretty darn good for a country that gigantic. Um, so just a few years after the United States or before the United States, however you want to look at it. Um, okay, so now we're going to start our video. And I'm going to tell you, pause the video and answer this question. If you're in A period, B period. D, et cetera. Okay, so we're going to look at um, right here. Got a lot of videos here. All right, so we're going to look at how it became a global pandemic. Cure the disease and try to find ways to curtail it. Yeah. Apologize for that. In Eastern China. Okay, here we go. Where health officials believe the new coronavirus originated and eventually spread across the globe. Cases of the disease it causes, known as COVID-19, have risen rapidly as health officials have worked to contain the virus. Here's how COVID-19 
became a global pandemic. On December 1st, 2019, a patient in Wuhan. Okay, so if you were in A period, if you could please write down the date that the first patient started showing symptoms of the COVID-19 virus. Begins to show symptoms of viral pneumonia, according to a report in the Lancet Medical Journal. That patient is believed to be the first documented case of the virus. Throughout the month, a series of pneumonia cases of unknown cause emerge in Wuhan. Symptoms include a fever. Okay,、um, if you're in B period, please write down the three things that people are describing as their symptoms as they show up in the hospital in Wuhan. Labored breathing and a dry cough. At the end of the month. The Chinese government informs the World Health Organization of a cluster of pneumonia cases in Wuhan. Between December 31st and January 3rd, a total of 44 cases. Okay, if you're in D period now, please write the number of cases that showed up in the hospital between this like four-day stretch, December 31st to January 3rd. How many people in Wuhan were coming to the hospital? They were saying that they had pneumonia at that point because it wasn't this known virus yet. Are reported to the WHO. Many of the patients were found to have visited an open-air seafood and animal market within the city. Chinese authorities shut down the market, and on January fifth, the WHO reports the infection could be connected to exposure to live animals. Chinese scientists discover sick patients. Okay, and if you're in A pair now. Please write down what they thought caused this. It was exposure to what type of thing that they think caused the virus. If you could write that down. Are infected with a new strain of coronavirus, according to Chinese state media. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses that include the common cold. At this point, there are no documented instances of human-to-human -human transmission. On January 11th, China reports the first death from the disease in Wuhan. Okay, and if you're in B period, write this first death was recorded on what date? And it's a little over a month of the the person they sometimes they call patient zero showed up at the hospital, and then now we're about 41 days from patient zero showing up with his symptoms until he dies. Concerns grow about the ability to contain the virus over the upcoming Chinese Lunar New Year, when millions of people travel across the country. Wuhan is connected to other major Chinese cities by nearly 22,000 miles of high-speed rail, and connected to the world via an international airport that transports 24 and a half million passengers a year. Okay, if you are in B period, please write down. How many million people leave Wuhan a year to go to other cities? Like they're just saying, this connected that flies out how many passengers a year? So it just shows you. This is quickly going to show you how it has become this pandemic. It connects to thirty cities around the globe. A Chinese tourist traveling from the Wuhan area is found to have a fever after arriving at the airport in Bangkok, Thailand. Okay, now D period. If you could、uh, write down the country that they just discussed, that now it's left China and it's made it to this country. On January thirteenth, this person is confirmed to have the first case of the new coronavirus outside of mainland China. Over the next week, cases appear across Asia and in the United States as well. According to the WHO, on January twenty third, there are five hundred and eighty one confirmed cases globally. As health officials across the globe,、uh, cases、on. of the disease it causes, known as COVID nineteen, have risen rapidly. As health officials have worked to contain the virus globally. Yeah, let me just、uh, go back to think about that stat for a second. That you know, January twenty third, there's five hundred eighty one cases、uh, in the world. They said. Uh, there's certainly a lot more. Just people hadn't been tested for that or hadn't shown up to the hospital yet. But think about that, though. Like two two bishop brothers in the whole world. That's the the amount of people that had this virus. Now it's literally shutting down the world almost、uh, in a lot of cases.
bringing it to its knees. And just two months ago, there was two Bishop Rossers that had this illness. Now the world is at its knees almost. As health officials announced the virus can spread between humans, the Chinese government cuts train and air travel out of Wuhan, effectively quarantining the entire city in an effort to contain the spread. With over 7,800 confirmed cases, the WHO declares the coronavirus a global public health emergency, indicating authorities... Okay, if you're an A period, if you could type in, what did the Global Health Organization declare it? It was a global health blank um, that was declared on January 23rd. And this is Wuhan here. This, they, the state just took over, said nobody's coming out of your house, basically, in Wuhan, unless it's absolutely necessary. They Going back to how we started this lesson, they're a communist nation. They People are not going to typically fight back against the rules uh, that a communist government puts into play, and, and there's this, what the streets look like. Whereas our country, we might urge you to do so, and, and we, we could get to the point, Ohio is saying you're not going to be able to leave your house unless you're going to the grocery store, et cetera. But this is uh, this is Wuhan a couple months ago. I believe the virus is a significant threat beyond China. In Yokohama, Japan, passengers aboard the Diamond Princess cruise liner are quarantined. For almost three weeks, passengers are confined to the ship as they are tested for the virus. 696 people on the ship are ultimately confirmed to be infected. Okay, if you're in B period. Type in how many people on this ship had the virus. How many people got it? This crazy figure right there. Three weeks being on a cruise ship. And that's what their rooms were. The lucky passengers had a balcony and an outside view. Some people were inside the ship with no air coming. I mean, you could there was oxygen, but no like outside air or anything. Couldn't get outside, no sunlight or anything. So think about that for a second including some Americans. A week later, the WHO officially names the disease COVID-19. The name is an abbreviated form of coronavirus disease 2019. On February 17th, the number of... Okay, if you're in D period, just explain how they got COVID-19. Just explain how that name came about. Now we're back to A period coming up cases reported by the WHO rises sharply after Chinese authorities changed the criteria for diagnosing the illness, raising concerns that the virus is speeding up, not slowing down. Up until this point, the vast majority of cases have been confined to mainland China. But by February 24th, new cases flare in South Korea, Italy, and Iran. Okay, if, on February 24th, A period, if you could write down that date, February 24th, it shows up in Italy, and they are not prepared for this. And we're going to see, and if, if you watch anything on the news, there, there's some videos I can't show you because they're too graphic, but they are woefully underprepared for what's coming their way on February 24th. And a month into it, uh, there was uh, 800 people died on Saturday in Italy. Um because of this lack of preparation and, and how horrible this virus can be if you don't have the right medical supplies. In the United States, thousands of people are asked to self-quarantine to curtail infections in several states. State health officials in California, Oregon, and Washington report new cases of COVID-19 with no travel history to China or known exposure to carriers. Worries increase that the virus is spreading in American communities. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases globally tops 100,000. As President Trump signs into law an $8.3 billion spending bill to combat the virus. Over the next week and a half, major sporting events are canceled, schools and businesses are closed, and many Americans are advised to stay home to limit contact with others. On March 13th... The okay, and B period, if you could... Type in what date did Donald Trump declare a national emergency to confront the coronavirus? The president declares a national emergency as the virus continues to create major disruptions to American life. 
COVID-19 continues to spread and impact communities around the globe as health officials monitor the disease and try to find ways to curtail it. Okay, so we ended. I, deep here, it needs to get a, the next question. So we're going to look at one of the things that we're really worried about was the, the Chinese New Year and people le- basically taking vacations from their job and going out through the countryside. We've already watched this video before, but it, just a good example, a little bit um, lighter video of what was the Chinese New Year all about. I'm just going to let it play out with no questions here a sixth of the world's population including more than one billion chinese citizens celebrate chinese new year the 15-day festival also known as lunar new year or the spring festival kicks off on the second new moon after the winter solstice or according to the gregorian calendar in use since the 16th century sometime between january 21st and february 19th but chinese new year goes back a lot further than the 16th century It's based on the ancient Chinese calendar, which existed as early as the 14th century BC. Even though China adopted the Western calendar in 1912 and began marking January 1st as the official start of the year, Chinese New Year remains the country's most important social and economic holiday. Over the centuries, holiday festivities have spread far beyond China and now take place all over the world. In fact, The biggest celebration outside of China takes place in the United States, San Francisco to be exact. Ever since the gold rush in the 1840s and 50s brought an influx of Chinese immigrant workers to Northern California, the city has held a massive parade for Chinese New Year. According to Chinese tradition, each year is named for one of the 12 animals associated with the Chinese zodiac. Two of those animals, the dragon and the rabbit, are particularly important to Chinese New Year. You'll see dragons everywhere because the Chinese are said to have descended from the mythical creature. And on the 15th day of the new year, known as the Festival of Lanterns, many people display paper lanterns in the shape of rabbits. These symbolize a Chinese goddess named Chang Bu, who is said to have brought a rabbit along with her when she jumped on the moon. To prepare for Chinese New Year, lots of people clean out their houses to rid them of ghosts and bad luck associated with the old year. They might get a new haircut and clothes, settle disagreements, or pay off debts in order to start the year fresh. In this way, the Chinese New Year customs resemble the Western custom of New Year's resolutions. In the late night hours of Chinese New Year's Eve, many families make dumplings together. This food is said to bring good fortune to the household. Long noodles are also a traditional Chinese New Year's dish. But if you want to live a long life, never cut the noodles while eating them. And be sure to wear red, the color of good luck, and avoid black, which many people associate with death. Whether they are superstitions or resolutions, one thing's for sure, there's a lot of tradition associated with Chinese New Year that we bet you didn't know. Okay, so that's a little bit lighter video. Their New Year did not uh, um, take place like it normally did because of the virus. They they definitely uh, clamped down on people traveling around. China. One thing that brought up is a lot of Chinese Americans, and uh, there's been debate on uh, the president's use of the word the Chinese virus, and it does it hurt the uh, you know Chinese Americans? Is it discriminatory against uh, the Chinese Americans? I'm not going to get into that uh, lecture debate right now, but I'm just curious if we have a sizable amount of what is the uh, Chinese American population in our country. Um, so we would be looking at Asian. So the Asian population, these aren't necessarily all Chinese, of course, but 5% of our um, 330 million people are consider themselves Asian. So that would be uh, if uh, about 15, 15, 16, 17 million people in our country are Asian. Okay, so... Uh, that's like three times the state of uh, Kentucky or so. So we have a pretty sizable Asian American population in our country. All right, so we're going to look at what I said before. We just have two more videos here, and we're done. Both short. All right, so D period still needs to answer a question. So D period um, will be the next to answer a question. You Each class will just have uh, one or two more questions, and then we're done here. So we will start right here. Italy crossed the 
rim milestone this week, surpassing China as the global epicenter of the pandemic. But there is some encouraging news about the caseload. Ian Lee is in London. Good morning. Europe continues to struggle to contain the coronavirus. More countries are now ordering non-essential businesses to close. And when you think it can't get any worse for Italy, it does. Patients on life support in an Italian hospital. So too is the country's medical system. In the last day, 627 people have died making it not only Italy's deadliest day, but the deadliest day worldwide since the outbreak began. Advice from Europe's epicenter, flatten the curve. If you slow it down enough, you can take care of people. Otherwise... Okay, D period, if you could write down that Italy is now the epicenter of the coronavirus. That's their terminology they're using. But uh, it's very, very scary what's going on in Italy right now. by the mass of sick people in one or two days. There's no glad handing for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. The royal couple visited an emergency dispatch center in London. The government here recently asked 65,000 retired doctors and nurses to report for duty. Okay, and uh, A period now. So each class is going to get one more question. So A period, you're done after this. Um, how many thousand doctors were called back in England to work because of this virus. At cafes, pubs, and restaurants, it's last call as they've been ordered to close. I understand the pubs are being closed, but six months is a bit of a long time to not go to And B period, this guy's pretty jacked up, means he can't go to the bars with his buddies. How long did England close down the pubs? So the pub is a, another word for a bar. How long have they closed them down? I think if the pubs close in the world, it's just going to go insane. The world is shutting down with empty streets from Baghdad to Bogota and London to Lisbon. Japan is feeling growing pressure to cancel this summer's Olympic Games as athletes practicing social distancing train from home. But in China, life begins to return to normal. Ruthless tactics to stop the pandemic seem to have worked. Wuhan, the virus's epicenter, reported no new cases for the third straight day. Okay, and D period, that's your last question. How many straight days had Wuhan not had a case of the coronavirus show up at their hospitals? The communist government is now shifting to deliver aid to hard-hit countries, a move to gloss over its initial failure to contain a local virus. Now on a global scale. It's been two weeks since the first confirmed coronavirus death in the UK. Since then, the death toll has risen faster than Italy over the same period, leading some to fear the Italians could be giving us a glimpse of the future here. Dana? Okay, so uh, we just have one more video to watch. So as far as your, your questions are concerned, your questions that I ask you are all done. You just have to have them typed onto a doc. And uh, I will put an assignment for you to share it there. Um, we uh, and the one thing I will say about Italy compared to the United States is very hard to compare to the two countries to one another. Um, it's a much smaller country, and they're more you probably would say more uh, densely populated. So maybe uh, the viruses can spread easier to one another and closer surroundings. And I would make an argument that uh, because we're a much larger population, we have a lot more resources. You would definitely could make the argument that our, our infrastructure, our hospitals, our, uh, maybe even our, um, you know, our education and training might be a little bit, I don't want to say superior, but more intensive. And uh, so we might be a little bit better suited at handling this. But they, they were the sort of canary in the coal mine to show us, if you don't take this serious, this is what's going to happen. And the, again, we said uh, before we left is we're not necessarily worried about someone like you or I getting it. We're worried about someone like you or I getting it, not knowing we have it and spreading it to 100 people or, or 1,000 people in uh, 14 days before we show symptoms. So the big uh, elephant in the room here is what's going to happen to the Olympics. And so we will end the 
to the lesson on just a two minute video about the Olympics. No questions here. Just kind of give you an update of what they are thinking. Olympic Committee and Tokyo organizers say they still plan to go ahead with this summer's Tokyo Games as scheduled. But with each day that passes, the chances of that happening look more and more in doubt. It's not simply that the world remains in the grip of the coronavirus pandemic, with the United States, Canada, and much of Europe on lockdown, and new cases popping up each day in Africa, the Middle East, and South America. As of mid-March, the IOC said that only 57% of the athletes who will be in Tokyo have qualified for the Games. That means 43% still have to book their spots. And how are they going to do that when qualifying tournaments and events across the globe have been canceled or postponed? Athletes in Europe and the United States are scrambling just to find places to train. In the United States, for example, many athletes train at colleges and universities, which have closed their facilities because of coronavirus. It's not an ideal way to prepare for the Olympic Games, and we're starting to see more and more athletes ask the IOC for either clarification or say that the Games need to be postponed. Now, there are still four months to go, which leaves the IOC plenty of time to make a decision. But it's no longer a sure bet that the Games will go off as scheduled. Okay, so that is where our uh, lesson ends today. Please email me if you have any questions. Uh, this uh, document that I was talking about it would be due um, Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Okay, so we'll have another thing posted on Tuesday during the day, but this uh, homework is not due until Tuesday at 9 p.m. Uh, my Mr. Davis um, prediction is there will not be an Olympics this summer. I'm hoping that it gets postponed to next summer. Uh, I pray that they don't try to squeeze it in because I think it would be horrible for uh, the athletes and a lot of different things. And I think it's going to become pretty clear pretty soon that they're going to have to postpone the games. Um, so hopefully you get off to a good start this week, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later.